Okay, welcome back. So, what we will talk about today is more about permutations. So, so far what we have been interested in doing is well counting permutations or per counting combinations and so on. Now, what we would like to do is to study permutations in a you know in a slightly different way. What we would like to do is to try and understand permutations themselves rather than just count the total number of permutations. So, recall what is an example of a permutation. So, well a typical permutation is just a rearrangement of the numbers. So, let me write down ex an example 5 1 6 7 2 3 4 8. Okay. So, here is an example of a permutation of the numbers 1 through 8. Okay. Now, so sometimes we can think of these as being the various positions. So, there are 8 positions which we have filled with these numbers in, in some order. So, often there is a, there are various notations which make it somewhat easier to think about permutations. So, one of them is what is called the two line notation. So, a two line notation, so this permutation here would be represented as follows. So, we think of this first thing here as really being position 1 and the second blank here as being position 2, the third is position 3 and so on. So, we think of each of them as being a certain position 5, 6, 7, 8 and then we write down what, so the first line here is the position. So, in position 1, position 2, 3, 4, So, we first the top row here the, the top line is just the position numbers and the bottom line is the entry in that position. So, for example, in the first position here we have the number 5, the second position has the number 1, 6, 7, 2, 3, 4 and 8. So, this notation here is sometimes called the two line notation for a permutation. So, the, the thing we wrote out first is often called the one line notation where we do not explicitly write out the positions themselves, but only keep track of the, the numbers in the various positions. So, this is another way of representing the same permutation. Now, observe, so there are there is also a pictorial way you can think of a permutation as really being a function. So, what do we mean by that? So, imagine I have the set consisting of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So, that is my set. So, let me draw it as a set and a permutation. So, let me call this set as S. A permutation can be thought of as giving you a function from the set S to itself. So, I have the set S to the set S. So, what is this, this given permutation? Think of it as the first set S as sort of being like the position numbers and the second set S sort of representing the, the entries themselves. So, uh, what we have is something which sends 1 to 5, 2 to 1. So, let us write this out. Uh, this sends 1 to the number 5, uh, 2 maps to the number 1. So, this function sends 3 to 6, 4 to 7. Uh, 5 to 2, so 2, 3, 4 and 8. So, this goes to 2, 6 goes to 3, 7 goes to 4 and 8 goes to itself. So, this picture here that we have drawn is well another way of thinking of the same permutation. It is a function from the set 1 through 8 to itself and further it, it has the following nice property that it is a 1 to 1 and on to function. So, well what is the permutation? So, observe a permutation of in this example the numbers from 1 to 8 is nothing but is uh, nothing but a function from the set consisting of the numbers 1 through 8 to itself. So, let me from it is a function from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 to itself, but it is more it is in fact 
a one to one and on to function. So, that is a key key observation here it is these two uh, put together is what sometimes called a bijection or a bijective function one to one of course, means that two different elements of s here do not map to the same element. So, everything maps to different elements and on to means that every single element in s here has something which maps to it ok. So, it is sometimes called a one to one correspondence everything here maps to different things there and everything there does get mapped from something ok. So, it is a one to one and on to function and so, sometimes such diagrams are, are nice to have. Now, uh, one of the simplest examples of a permutation in general is what is called a cycle. <coughs> so, what is an example of a cycle? So, let us assume we have the numbers uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, here is an example of a cycle 2, 3, 4, 1. So, what is this? So, this is the one line notation. So, now I have I've written this out in one line notation. The same thing in two line notation would be the following. So, I have four positions. So, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, those are the four position numbers, and position 1 maps to 2, in position 2 I have 3, in 3 I have 4, and 4 I have 1, right. It is the same permutation in, in two line notation. And so, again you could also think of it in terms of the function. So, what is it from the function point of view? So, I have a diagram as I did before I have 1, 2, 3, 4 the set 1, 2, 3, 4. So, here 1 goes to 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 4 and 4 maps to 1 ok. So, those are the three different notations or ways of thinking about it. But in this case, there is yet another thing one can do. So, we, we have 1. So, imagine you know what happens. So, think of it from the function point of view or the two line notation point of view. Let us start with 1 and look at what 1 maps to. So, 1 maps to 2 and now, now I am at 2 and I look at what 2 maps to. 2 maps to 3 according to this. 3 maps to 4 which then maps back to 1 ok. So, here is yet another way of thinking about or or depicting this permutation it is just something which sends 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 back to 1 ok. So, that is the reason why this is called a cycle it is you can think of it most ideally as well numbers 1 2 3 4 arranged in a circle with sort of arrows telling you. So, let us assume we have to go, go clockwise. So, it tells you you know which maps to which and they sort of map to each other in a cyclical fashion. So, this is a, this is why such a permutation is called a cycle ok. Sometimes it is called a four cycle to emphasize the fact that there are four numbers. Now, so cycles themselves are a very important uh, special case of permutations. Now, let us do a more general example. So, let us take the, the permutation which we had written out at first. So, one in two line notation 3, 4. So, here is here is the original example 5, 1, 6, 7, 2. Three, four, eight, and so this was the two line notation. So let's give this permutation a name. Let's call it pi. Okay, the permutation pi does this. Now let's try and think of this in terms of cycles. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's start with the number one. So we start with the number one. So that's this guy, and look at what it goes to. So one maps to five. So I write it in the same way. I have one mapping to five. Now. Well, what is next? Now that I am sort of at 5, I look at what 5 maps to under this permutation. So, 5 maps to 2 under this permutation. So, I note that down. Now, I am at 2. So, I go back to 2 and look at what that maps to. Well, it seems to map back to 1. So, it looks like 1, 5 and 2, they form a cycle in this permutation. 1 maps to 5 maps to 2 which maps to 1 ok. So, that takes care of these 3 numbers 1, 2 and 5 are taken care of. They form part of the cycle. So, let us keep going. Let us look at the next number that is not in the list which is a 3. So, I write down a 3 and see what a 3 goes to 3 goes to a 6, but then the 6 maps back to a 3 
So, it seems as if I have the following 3 goes to a 6, the 6 maps back to 3. Okay, so, I am also done with these two numbers 3 and 6. Now, I will look at 4, 7 and 8, I look at 4 which maps to 7, 7 maps back to 4. So, I again have 4 maps to 7, maps to 4 and 8 is the last guy here seems to map back to itself. Okay. Now, this picture that I have drawn here is not that of a single cycle, but rather of 4 different cycles. Okay. So, I have here a cycle of, of length 3. So, let us keep track of the lengths of the cycles. Here I have a cycle which has 3 numbers. So, I will call that a cycle of length 3. This guy here is a cycle of length 2. This guy here is a cycle of length 2 and the last guy is a cycle of length 1. So, a cycle of length 1 just means it is something which maps back to itself under the permutation. So, now what we have done is the following, we have looked at these 8 numbers, we have looked at a permutation of these 8 numbers and we have what we would call decomposed it into cycles. So, this permutation really is composed of, well there is a 3 cycle, there is a 2 cycle, another 2 cycle and a 1 cycle. These 4 cycles put together give you back this permutation. So, sometimes this, this way of decomposing is called the cycle decomposition and so we often have yet another notation for this. So, this is called the cycle decomposition. So, the notation for this is the following the given permutation pi that we had out, had in the beginning we are we have noticed that it has the following cycles there is 1 goes to 5 goes to 2 these form a 3 cycle. So, we write this within brackets, this is to be interpreted as well this is just 1 maps to 5 maps to 2. This is just another way of writing it without having to write, write circles and so on. Now, I have 3 6 which is shorthand for 3 maps to 6 maps to 3 and I have 4 7 and 8. So, this is again shorthand for 4 maps to 7 and this is just 8 maps to itself. Okay. So, this notation upstairs is just what is called the cycle decomposition of the given permutation and the cycle structure or cycle type. So, sometimes there are two words for this, sometimes we call it the cycle structure of pi or the cycle type of pi is the following it is the you just keep track of the lengths of the cycles. So, for example, here it there is a 3 cycle and there is a 2 cycle and another 2 cycle and a 1 cycle. So, we would often say that the cycle structure of pi is just the list. So, what is the cycle structure? It is a list of numbers arranged in descending order. Okay. So, there is we do not really want to know the order of this. So, we would not want to say the cycle structure is say 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 and so on. We are only interested in knowing what are the various lengths which appear. So, we just arrange them in descending order. So, we have 3, 2, 2, 1 and notice that the total the sum of all these numbers must always be 8 because that is the that is the number of numbers in all right. The total number of numbers is 8. So, of course, the sum of lengths of all the cycles that you get must had better be 8. So, 3, 2, 2 and 1 would have to add up to 8. So, so, observe that the cycle structure always has this property the cycle type and so sometimes we call this well this is usually what is called a partition of 8. Okay, a partition the definition is it is a way of writing the given number as a sum of natural numbers. So, what are other possible partitions of 8? Uh, instead of 3, 2, 2, 1, you could say for example, 7 plus 1 would be another partition or uh, 6 plus 1 plus 1 would be another partition and so on. So, there is a very long list of partitions of 8. This particular permutation has this cycle structure which is you know which gives you this particular partition of 8. So, let us sort of look at uh, uh, a counting problem which again arises naturally in this context. So, it is a finer counting problem than just counting all permutations. So, again we will do it by example. 
So, 8 is somewhat large for our purposes let us take uh, just permutations of 4 So, I am going to look at permutations of the numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4 okay. observe that the total number of permutations is 4 factorial which is 24, but what I want to do is we have just talked about cycle types right. So, I want to do the following I am going to look at I am going to categorize them by cycle types. So, I am going to make a table which has cycle types on the one hand and the number of permutations with that cycle type on the on the other column. So, for example, what do we mean? So, so, let me look at the following let me look at permutations whose cycle type is 3 1 ok. So, uh, I am I am going to do the full list, but let me start with this I am going to look at permutations whose cycle type is 3 comma 1. So, what do I mean by that? So, notice that when you say cycle type is 3 and 1 what it means is I am looking for a permutation of 1, 2, 3 and 4 in which there is a 3 cycle for instance 1 maps to 2 maps to 3 back back to 1 and 4 maps to itself. Here is here is an example of a permutation whose cycle structure is 3 comma 1 right and well what are other examples. So, I well basically I, know I, ha I need to have a 3 cycle and I need to have a 1 cycle. So, how do I write down other examples? Well, first let us choose the what goes into the 1 cycle that is the easiest thing to do. So, instead of 4 I could pick some other number let me make 3 as the the uh, element which is in the 1 cycle. Then the numbers in the 3 cycle are determined. So, 3 is already done. So, I need to look at the numbers 1, 2 and 4. So, I have the numbers 1, 2 and 4 and how many different 3 cycles can I form with those? So, for instance I could arrange them as 1 going to 2 going to 4 or I could arrange them as 1 going to 4 going to 2. Okay. So, at the moment what I have done is just write up write down a bunch of examples of permutations of the numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4 in which the for which the cycle structure is 3 comma 1. Okay. Now, what we want of course, is to count the total number of such permutations right. So, let us try and do this. So, the number of permutations with cycle type 3 1 how do I try and count this ok. So, here is the here is the uh, here is the idea we have already used it when trying to write down examples of such permutations. First we pick the number which goes into the 1 cycle ok. So, first we out of these 4 numbers we choose 1 number. So, that is 4 C 1 ways of choosing 1 number and what does this 4 C 1 represent? This is the number of choices for the entry which goes into the 1 cycle. So, here we have just chosen choose entry for the 1 cycle ok. So, that is 4 C 1 choices having done that what are we what are we left with? We are left with 3 numbers right whatever that 1 number is gone and we have 3 numbers. For instance, here we had the numbers 1, 2 and 4. Now, there still remains the the issue of arranging those 3 numbers into a circle ok. So, what we still need to do is the following we need to figure out how many ways are there of arranging say these 3 numbers in a circle or more generally here is a problem that will come up and we want to do this find the number of ways of arranging n numbers in a circle let us say the one the numbers 1 to n in a circle ok. So, observe 
here is the here is the thing that is for instance I have the arrangement 1 going to 2 going to 3 going to n going to 1. Now, I will think of this arrangement as being the same as an arrangement in which I move the numbers clockwise. So, when I say I want to only arrange them in a circle what I mean is that I only want to look at the relative positions what matters is only you know what is to the right of the 1 and what is to the left of the 1 not so much uh, you know not so much where 1 is sitting. So, for instance this arrangement here I will think of as being the same as the arrangement in which everything is rotated say by 1 unit say the n comes to the top and the 1 the 2 and so on. This arrangement is the same as the arrangement in which the 1 is sort of at the head of a table ok. So, now uh, this is the, the usual thing of circular permutations. So, how do we count this number? So, the key idea is since we do not really mind uh, rotating all of them by some unit here is what we will do we will fix once and for all uh, somebody in the head of the table. So, when you have a circular table like this think of this the head of the table this position as being fixed because I can always assume that 1 for instance the number 1 occurs at the head of the table and why could I do this because I since I do not care about rotating them all I could easily rotate if 1 is not at the head I would rotate it sufficiently so as to bring 1 to the head of the table ok. Now, once you have done that the remaining n minus 1 numbers you permute them in all possible ways. So, the number of ways of arranging the numbers 1 to n in a circle is in fact equal to the number of ways of so we do the following we fix the number 1 at the head of the table meaning in in say this top position and just count the number of ways of permuting the remaining n minus 1 numbers in all possible ways. sorry the numbers 2 through n. So, you permute these in every possible way and since there are only n minus 1 of these the total number of ways of doing this is only n minus 1 factorial ok. So, this is what we usually call circular permutation. So, we are only interested in uh, their relative positions and the number of such uh, configurations is in fact n minus 1 factorial. So, coming back to this problem here we have chosen the entry which goes into the 1 cycle what is left is 3 numbers and those 3 numbers must be arranged in a circle and the number of ways of doing it as we just saw is 3 minus 1 factorial. So, it is 4 choose 1 times n minus 1 factorial where n is 3. So, what is this? This is just the number of circular permutations of the remaining 3 numbers <coughs> ok. So, we have managed to solve this counting problem the total number of choices would therefore be 4 choose 1 is 4 and uh, 3 minus 1 factorial is 2. So, it is 4 into 2 which is 8 ok. So, the number of permutations of cycle type 3 1 is in fact 8. Now, of course, one wants to do it for every other cycle type as well. So, observe as we said a cycle type would always be a partition of 4. So, you could have a 3 cycle and a 1 cycle or you could just have a 4 cycle or you could have a 2 cycle and a 2 cycle. You could have a 2 cycle and 2 1 cycles or you could just have all 1 cycles ok. So, you could have these are the various possible cycle types and so I will just partially complete this table. So, if you have uh, so for instance let us count how many permutations would have cycle type 4 ok. To have cycle type 4 just means how many 4 cycles are there how many ways are there of arranging the numbers 1 2 3 and 4 in a circle and we have already solved the problem it is 4 minus 1 factorial. So, it is 3 factorial which is 6 ok. 
okay. So, similarly if I have 2 1 1 and I want to know how many ways are there of uh, how many permutations are there with, with, with this particular cycle type here is what you would do you would pick well there are 2 1 cycles and 1 2 cycle. So, let us pick the 2 numbers which form part of the 2 cycle. So, once you fix the 2 cycle the elements in the 1 cycles are automatically fixed ok. So, the number of ways of doing this is you first pick the 2 entries which will form part of the 2 cycle. So, there are 4 choose 2 ways of picking those 2 entries and once you have picked them you still need to arrange them in a circle ok. So, the number of ways of arranging 2 numbers in a circle is just 2 minus 1 factorial which is just 1 factorial ok. So, this is again 4 choose 2 which is a 6 and so, I am sort of doing this a little fast because I really want you to think about this uh, on your own. So, these remaining 2 entries observe that the total sum of all these numbers had better be 24 because the total number of permutations of 1, 2, 3 and 4 is exactly 24. So, observe total permutations, total number of permutations is 24. So, here I have 6, 8, 6 and let me just fill fill these remaining 2 numbers and you should work these out to see that you get exactly these numbers. This is a 3 and the last one is a 1 ok. So, a 6, 8, 3, 6, 1 let us check it is 24 that is 14 plus 3, 17, 23, 24 ok. So, these are the, the, the various numbers of permutations of differ, uh, various cycle types. So, observe this is a somewhat finer counting, finer counting of the set of permutations. The total number is just you know counted very easily it is 4 factorial, but when you want to get a finer idea of how many have cycle type 4, how many have cycle type 3 and 1 or 2, 2 and so on then you need to sort of use these ideas of circular permutations and first choosing the entries and things like that ok. So, it is a slightly more sophisticated counting problem which brings in many of the techniques we have looked at so far. Okay. So, next time we will do a little bit more about uh, permutations specifically related to cycle types and the notion of sign of a permutation.